All right, good evening. Now I'd like to bring the regular evening meeting of the Township Landing Council to order. And um, if anyone is checking the score of the Giants versus the Prince Albert Raiders, Game 7 for the Western Hockey League, please let us know if they score. It'll be okay at this meeting because we've got our very own Giants hanging on for their dear life in Game 7 over in Prince Albert. So with that, I'm going to ask for a motion to adopt and see the agenda items with H3 um, being removed as uh, it hasn't been... H3 is being pulled. So moved by, as Polly Cole, uh, third reading. Moved by Councillor Ferguson, second by Councillor Davis. Uh, call the question, all those in favour. Vote was carried. And uh, adoption of minutes, regular evening council meeting April 15th, and public hearing meeting of April 15th. We have a motion to receive and adopt. Councillor Arneson, second by Councillor Woodward. Any errors or omissions? Seeing none, call the question. All those in favour? Opposed and carries. And... We move on to, uh, there are no presentations, we move on to delegations. D1 is uh, Jessica Yaniv, if please come forward and uh, please provide your name and you have five minutes. Good Excellent. evening, Worship and Councillors. My name is Jessica Yaniv and I'm here um, from Walnut Grove and here to discuss gender-based uh, differential pricing. So, there should be a uh, notice of motion in front of you as well. Just want to make sure. Yep, we received it in our distribution package today. Perfect. So... Basically, I'm just going to give um, a little background on what exactly is gender-based differential pricing. So this is basically um, women are charged, um, like this is not just in Langley, but this is just in general. Um, women are charged more for the same service as men when it comes to things like haircuts, uh, for example. So when a woman gets her hair cut, even getting her ends trimmed, she pays far more than a man with a full head of care to cut with the same amount of time or less uh, being spent, the, spent on the map. Uh, my question is, how is this fair? Like, this is occurring in the township of Langley, and is council really doing anything about it because it's technically discriminatory practice? So I'm going to give a couple examples um, of this. So this is one, one example from a, a salon in, in the township. So as you can see over here, um, at a very, very basic level, a uh, woman gets her hair cut, it starts at 55 bucks. If a man gets her his hair cut, it starts at 36 bucks. So technically, um, these businesses are imposing something called a gender-based tax on services. My question is, how exactly is this fair, and how exactly is the township allowing this to still happen? Like, I'm going to give a second example. Here's the second example here. So... Um, at, the, at a starting point, uh, for an elite designer, a uh, cut would start at 62 bucks. A men's cut uh, starts at 43 That would impose a gender tax of $19. I'll give a third example here. Um, now, this is with a new talent, so I'm stalling. So at the starting point, women, 42 uh, men, uh, $29. And it doesn't even matter what service you get done. It's still the same price. So... Basically, uh, the Township of Langley and other municipalities are allowing uh, this to occur. So this is essentially known as something called the pink tax. I don't know if you have ever heard of that uh, term being used, like in terms of razors, ballpoint pens, and such as well. Uh, so businesses that are operating in the TOL, such as hair salons, um, it's going without anything being done. So in front of you, the notes of motion, basically with, um, with some things in order to get that abolished. So that's basically my request. So this is what my suggestion on a fair way to calculate uh, service-based pricing without imposing gender in that. And that's basically being a flat rate, um, of course, government the fine maximum just to keep things fair uh, plus the time or the length of the service plus the skill level surcharge plus specialty service uh, and then plus premium st um, pre premium styling and, and, and color and such so when it comes to things like lengths um, and such what my suggestion is it's supposed to be on the on the length actually being service, not the total length of the hair. Like for example, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm guessing that when Councillor Kunz goes and gets her hair done, it's probably about 75 or more dollars, am I right? And how much does it cost Mayor Froze? 10 bucks, 
All 20 bucks? <laughs> I haven't paid 10 bucks for a haircut in a long David time. Counselor probably five bucks. I don't know. Three bucks a side. But, but basically what I'm just trying to do, you know, we, just, we need to get rid of this gender-based pricing. It's, it's garbage. There's no reason that anyone needs to be charged based on the gender that, that they identify as. Um, do I have one more slide? No, I don't. Um, so I'm curious what council's thoughts are on, a, you know, being a, um, being a runner in this and really abolishing this with the bylaw. Okay. Well, you're just here to present, so. I'm sorry? You're just here to present, so it's not a question to answer. Okay. So. Yeah. Thank you so okay, much. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And the next delegation is uh, Phil McAnally. McAnally, did I say that correctly? Good evening, Your Worship and uh, members of Council. My name is Phil McAnally. I live at uh, number 17, 21704, 96th Avenue in Langley. Um, I was here three months ago, February 11th, so I'm almost calling this my quarterly delegation. I hope I'm not here in September. Uh, it's it's based on 216th Street, the interchange. Uh, there's obviously a long-standing communication between members in Walnut Grove and this council and previous councils before us. Um, all we're trying to accomplish tonight, I know Councillor Richter has put a notice of motion that's towards the tail end of tonight's agenda uh, regarding the quarter study. So at my February 11th um, delegation to council, I asked for numerous safety um, processes to be hopefully in, implemented or looked at regarding pedestrian safety, child safety in and around the elementary schools, and generally just foot traffic, bike traffic, even car traffic to be implemented hopefully prior to the interchange being opened. In this uh, delegation, we did ask for a corridor study. And I was quite surprised to hear towards the end of March that uh, Council had discussed this and actually put forward a plan for the 2019 budgeting process to include $100,000 towards a corridor study to be implemented on the 216th uh, Street north of 88th Avenue and even inclusive of the actual interchange, the Telegraph Trail portion too. Uh, this was then put towards... Uh, I guess members of the community to go on the website, the Township of Langley website and vote uh, as to what allocated um, monies for the 2019 budgeting process um, we were in favor of and what we maybe didn't find good value in. And obviously there was enough support within our community that the corridor study was something that you guys chose to do and implement or hopefully implement, at least you budgeted for it. Um, April 1st at a regular council meeting in the evening, um, a member of council put that to the floor as a question asking what was sort of the status with the corridor study that was put in place for the budgeting purpose and it was then referred back to staff from council. Staff then created a memo um, back to council basically stating that enough planning had been done um, regarding the 216th interchange and a quarter study at this time wouldn't be prudent because they had enough data and information regarding vehicular traffic and models and all of that stuff to sort of back the concerns that we had right now and they were going to basically look at it as a wait and see approach. Let's just let the interchange open up, see what the traffic flow is, monitor the traffic flow and rather than implementing a bunch of curb extensions and, and more traffic lights and things like that that we are looking for as residents of Walnut Grove on 216th to protect our kids going to school, um, they want to see what's going to happen and how many more, what, what type of increase are we going to see along there prior to implementing this and potentially having to take some of it away in order to alleviate traffic concerns, backups onto the interchange, things like that. I met with an engineering staff member after that memo was, was produced. Him and I had a long discussion about this, and I do understand the standpoint of a wait-and-see approach. I do want to be fair with that. My background is not one of an engineer or a road safety planner or anything like that. I'm a tradesman. I'm a licensed electrician. I also train tradespeople for BCIT. been doing it for 15 years. If I'm installing electrical within a household, there are plans put in place to ensure safety and limit risk of fire and shock hazard. 
There's codes we follow, um, best practices, things like that. I think that if we were to allow the floodgates to open off on the interchange at the end of the year without putting some sort of calculated measures in place, we're looking at a worst-case scenario, which is going to obviously be severe, in my opinion, anyways. I don't want to see members of our community put at risk because we've got a massive amount of traffic that hasn't been able to be mitigated due to some safety things that a corridor study could have put off. So at this point, I'm hoping that you guys can look at Councillor Richter's motion at the end and hopefully vote in favour to at least get the corridor study implemented immediately prior to the interchange being opened. Thanks. Thank you. I have a question from uh, Councillor yeah. Richter. Councillor Richter. Um, yes. I, I, you mentioned in your talk and also in your delegation request <clears throat> that you want the corridor study or the residents up there want the corridor study done prior to the interchange opening as opposed to after the interchange opens, which yes. is what staff have basically recommended to council. I'm just wondering if you could summarize why you guys think it's important to do this before the interchange opens? I think personally what we're looking for is at least to get it started so that there's a better baseline model going forward because from what I've had with discussions with engineering that they have done spot testing regarding you know traffic counts and things like that. I know where they've done it because I travel up and down 216th every day. And I know that it hasn't been there for weeks on end or months on end. Has it been there in the summertime versus September when, when school starts back up versus November, December? And I do understand that they can't allocate a, a vehicle counter to be sitting there year round. It'll get vandalized and damaged and things like that. The other thing, I don't know if they've actually properly assessed, you know, rate of travel and speed along that road. To the best of my knowledge, they've done traffic count. I don't think they've done any speed verica verification along there. So... The corridor study, along with TransLink getting involved and all of the other bodies that could potentially get involved, it's only going to be a help. That's what we're looking for, just at least set it in motion, which is something that we thought we had going prior to April 1st, and then all of a sudden it sort of changed the language again, and here I am again. So that's what we're looking for, and I know that there was some back and forth between members of our team and other members of council regarding this, and maybe some frustration with not knowing how to get the... the notice a motion worded appropriately. I think plain and simple, if we at least get it implemented and get it started, then it can sort of sort itself out along the way. It's something that should be continuous, not something that happens after the interchange or, you know, a month prior to the interchange opening. We should be looking at it now and modeling it along the way. That's what we want. Okay, and thank you for clarifying. It's You're not my notice of motion. Okay. It came from the community up there. I just yeah. was the one that sponsored it to go on. And thank you for that. Okay. Thank you. Oh, I have a question. Um, yes. And, and I, I hear you, and I know I had that debate too. I'm always con I'm conscious of how we best spend our money. And mm -hmm. uh, I know, and I'll discuss this once the motion comes up with staff. I'll ask them the questions. Um, but I think it's very important that we do a study once we know once it's open, um, and I wouldn't want to, so if we do a study now, I firmly believe we'll have to do another study after because it's important to know, and that was right from day one, staff said, once it's open, they'll be doing um, traffic studies and, and see the impact. It's difficult to do, we can do all the modeling in the world that we want, but until it's actually there, we, we're just guessing. So I, I would, I don't know if you want us to do one now and one then, I would certainly want to see one after whether we do one or now or not but I, I would rather spend the money after because we've done so much work on it already but I just want to get your, your feeling on M my feeling after. is I can't see why it couldn't happen yeah. both ways why we couldn't get one started with the aid of some other major bodies that are put in place like TransLink um, they would have recommendations maybe over and above what maybe the township engineers have thought about or you know Ministry of Transportation and all of that I do understand that 216th is part of the major road network I do understand through a lot of learning processes with this because I'm just a resident and electrician to begin with, but now I've learned a little bit more the difference between major arterial and minor collector and major, you know, all of that language was just totally foreign to me prior to this. And I almost think that I should be going back to school. To <laughs> Traffic engineer, yeah. no. Yeah. Um, so it, I, I know budget and monies and taxpayer funding needs to be allocated in areas of need. Um, and I do understand that. 
Langley's growing. You guys have a tough job allocating funds everywhere. Willoughby Slope is growing at an immense rate. It just keeps going and going, and we need the right plans in place. But I think you have to almost put the pause button on, on things, regardless of what the state of the process is right now, and look at and say, we need to get this right. This 216th interchange is such a unique situation anywhere across the Lower Mainland. You're never seeing a highway access to, to two elementary schools. You're not going to see it. And I don't know if when the plan was put in place that they were really looking that far ahead because I think everybody thinks, well, it's just a good way to move traffic through into a community. And I'm a resident, and you know what? I was initially opposed to the interchange in general, but I'll be honest, yeah, it's going to cut commute times and things like that. I get that. But the concern is I can be responsible for my driving. I don't know what others are going to be. Yeah, no, that's fair. I just yeah. I, I do okay. want to impress that we do need to do one after two. That, yes. That's important. No, and I agree yeah. with that. It should yeah. be both. Okay, thanks. Okay. Councillor Kunst. So would the group, um, would they be okay with if, I don't even know if this is possible, but if to get it started, so I, I feel this is very important that you guys want to have, get it started or you might lose the $100,000 that was allocated for that study. Am I right? In, well, in I, I think in what we had some correspondence, it doesn't necessarily mean we're going to lose that $100,000. I do understand that, you know, money gets allotted for specific things. Right. And whether or not it's spent at that time or it won't, it shouldn't be, in my mind, be reallocated into a general revenue that they're able to just put wherever. You know, that would be some really suspicious accounting if things were shifted all over the place. But if you've earmarked $100,000, be it spending it now or be it spending it at the end of the year, that money should be there, in my opinion. So, um, so, it, so I'm, I'm just trying to, like, so if there are a few things that you wanted to have studied, it's say if we, you know, we need to do the study again afterwards, that's what I keep hearing. Yeah. So it doesn't make sense for to do to do the whole study. What would be say two or three things that you would you would want to have studied to make sure that you know to get this process started i would say start with traffic count and speed those would be the big ones figure out where the traffic is currently modeling and going on 88th and 216th coming off a telegraph trail onto 216th like just have a look at the, that section we know what's going to happen down 216th when it hits 96th with no traffic light put in place right now I've talked with engineering staff about that, and there's no plan once the interchange is opening to put a light there yet. They need to see what's going to happen. So maybe you know. when we get, when the notice of motion comes, we can talk to staff and just to see yeah. if that's... Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, um, so now we'll move on to um, bylaws for first and second reading. Uh, F1 is rezoning application number 100572, Segra International Corporation, bylaw 5476. That's on 262 Street. Could I have a motion, please? Councillor Woodward, seconder. Councillor Kunst, uh, discussion on first reading? Seeing none, I'll call the question on F1. Motion carries unanimously. Move on to F2, rezoning application number 100503, development permit application number 100945, Generis Properties Limited on 86th Avenue, bylaw 5436. Could I have a motion, please? Mm -hmm. Councillor Ferguson, second by Councillor Kuntz. Discussion? Ar Councillor Arneson. Yes, thank you, Your Worship. Um, actually, I have a bit of a laundry list of questions. So um, I'm wondering, through Your Worship to staff, if um, if I can just refer to some of the information in the staff report. So uh, given where this subject uh, property is located, it indicates that there is a 15-meter setback from the freeway. I'm just wondering, uh, through Your to staff, is that a, a minimum distance requirement from a highway? Mr. Sefi? Your Worship... Uh... I'm not sure if Council Arneson is referring to a minimum requirement pursuant to, to a specific standard or not, but that is something that is, has been consistent along, along the corridor from the township's perspective, yes. Okay, so that's a, a standard number. Okay. Um, the other question that I had is about, so there's the lands that are to be developed, there's undevelopable lands, and so the township will be... Uh, getting those lands. However, it seems from the staff report that the zoning will remain the same for the township-owned lands, although they're supposed to be for conservation. Is there any other zoning or reason why we would leave it in an SR2 zone? 
Your Worship, the, the intent is going to be the protection of that area in perpetuity. And as long as the township has ownership of that, of that it doesn't really matter what the zone is. So it would be, a, again, uh, based on past practice, we have not looked at rezoning riparian areas or areas that are subject to uh, protection for environmental reasons, uh, regardless of the zone, because of the ownership. Okay, I understand that in theory. It's just that we can decide something that another council might be able to make a different decision on sometime in the future. So I personally... I think it's important to note that because it's riparian, there are other uh, layers of legislation that would not allow any development in that area. Well, I, I understand that in a perfect world, but... I'm just saying I thought it should be a conservation zone or something that would strongly indicate what its intention and purpose was going forward. Um, I had another question uh, through your worship to staff. I guess Mr. Safey is probably in the best position to answer this. There is a uh, trail installation along the riparian area, and I'm wondering um, what distance that would be from the, from the top of bank if there's an actual measurement we can refer to is that 30 feet or is that less just because it's part of the bank Stephanie? your worship perhaps i can just quickly uh i guess uh, give council honors a bit more comfort with the previous question mm -hmm. and highlight the fact that the area is actually designated for conservation as per the community plan so that the, the zoning Okay. Even though it remains the same, the designation is also identified, as you can see here, as Greenway. And as far as the, the trail is concerned, I believe typically it's a meandering trail, the, uh, the offset of which from the top of bank or from the, uh, the, the wetted area, the wetted uh, part or the central end of the creek varies. Uh, and it's subject to a detailed analysis or a survey, I should say, to find out if it's... Uh, conflicting with any trees to make sure that it is providing as least of an impact on the area as possible. And further to the trail then, do you happen to know the composition of the trail? Is it asphalt or would it be gravel of some type? Do you know? It, it wouldn't be asphalt, Your Worship. It's either gravel or or uh, existing, existing uh, grate there with some uh, minor surficial treatment. Oh, okay. So it's... Um... All right. Thank you very much. Councillor Davis? Yes, just um, it satisfies. I just was thinking the, the trail here. It's this is uh, the Yorkson Creek, uh, top of bank, and the trail. The, so the, the trail, where would the trail connect to in the next step? Would it go east? Uh, Your Worship, the trail connection is shown again on the on the Yorkson uh, neighborhood concept plan, and it does provide connectivity, as you can see on the screen there. It may not be that, uh, I guess, well uh, legible based on the on the size of the font there, but you can see the Greenway connection and the Greenway uh, connectivity that provides a trail within it. Okay, so it, I guess it would connect all it would connect all the way along the Yorkson Creek. That's correct. As it's developed. Okay, thank you. Councilor Richter? Yeah, um, I um, agree with what Councilor Arneson said with regards to it being a little close to the highway, those homes, uh, for my uh, taste. The other thing is 85 significant trees exist, most of which are described as shade suppression, asymmetrical canopy growth, prototropic sweep, or co-dominant attachment, and only 14 trees are proposed to be retained. I find that disappointing. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, any further discussion? Seeing none, I'll call the question on F2. It carries with Councillor Richter, Councillor Arneson, Councillor Davis opposed. And we now move on to bylaws for first, second, and third reading, and the score is 1-1. One, one. There we go. G1, Community Standards Bylaw. Bylaw number 5448 and bylaw number 5449. Could I have a motion, please? So Councillor Davis and a seconder. Need a seconder? Sure. Councillor Long, discussion. Councillor Richter. Uh, yes, I just wanted to confirm with staff, and I believe it's relative to the untidy and unsightly premises bylaw, if the uh, 
restriction is removed with this housekeeping as to how close you have to live to an unsightly premise in order to be able to report it as such? Mr. Safi? Your Worship, the uh, complaint requirements have not changed. They remain the same as what they were before. Okay, well, I recall Council getting a delegation, so I would like to move an amendment, and maybe I could do that after everyone's had a chance to, to, okay. to chat, that uh, we change that um, restriction. Okay, if you want to hold on to that, I've got three more on the list, then we'll come back to you. Councillor Ferguson? Uh, yeah, thank you, um, Your Worship. You know, it seems like um, every day with the challenges of folks finding places to park or storing vehicles and other things, the unsightly premises becomes uh, pertinent in the community and more and more uh, properties seem to be having this. Uh, if I may, through the chair to staff, if, if a complaint is lodged, how soon or how long before staff can either make a, a visit or a letter out and get it resolved, if I may? Mr. Seve? Uh Your Worship, uh, it's one thing to actually start investigating. It's another to resolve it. Uh, typically, staff are able to take a look at something straight away on the same day. That is typically uh, possible given the current current staff uh, resources that we have. However, as council is aware, a resolution of an issue could take much longer. So, if I if I may just supplemental, and I do appreciate all the efforts made by staff. Because I believe that's right. They they come out right away and they they look after and look at it. Now, some of these properties you're aware of, and I'm not going to pick, I'll say Mr. and Mrs. Smith somewhere in the community have had 10 or 20 trucks parked there for as long as I can remember. What is the process for if it goes on for a, a very long period of time, if I may? Uh, Your Worship, uh, of course, the question that Councillor Ferguson is asking uh, is kind of independent from the, the matter at hand, which is to do with a specific uh, bylaw uh, as opposed to bylaw enforcement procedures. Uh, with respect to the question, though, I can advise that that typically requires uh, an investigation uh, to confirm whether the, the infraction actually occurs and, and to what degree. Uh, that typically requires uh, some discussion with the owner and uh, bringing the matter into their, their attention. Maybe they were not aware of that. Uh, subsequently, giving them some period of time, again, depending on the severity, depending on how offensive the, the offense might be, giving them some time to bring the property into com compliance. That could be anything between a couple of weeks to a, a couple of months. And then depending, again, on on the uh, collaboration that staff might might feel is there, it could take uh, you know as quickly as a few days to have it resolved, or, or it might require uh, uh, an injunction. Thank you, Mr. State. And I do appreciate the work done by staff. It's just that it, um, this is important for to clean up the community as best we can, especially when folks are taking advantage of agricultural land usually. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Woodward. Yeah, I wanted to, to thank for the staff too for this bylaw. It's obviously been a long time coming to, to do some housekeeping around the consolidation of the multiple bylaws. Um, it was a, I did want to spend a little more time with it though than three days before giving it first, second, and third reading. And so that, you know, for, but first before I start, uh, discarded materials was out of alphabetical order. It actually took me a while to find it. Um, so it actually is in there, but I couldn't initially find it. So if we could get that corrected. Um, you know, I had some questions about some of the notice provisions. I found some of it a little heavy handed and I didn't know if that was just because of some of the issues that we see regarding bylaw enforcement. So for example, the way I read it, trying to decipher it as best I could, that no, we would consider notice given when we drop a letter in the mail and a person had five days from the moment we put it in the mailbox to correct the property or correct the issues before someone can attend under Schedule A and we can essentially charge them for all costs incurred by the municipality for all related labor materials or equipment as well as any and all charges contained in any other bylaw of the municipality Theoretically, this bylaw would allow us within five days of putting a letter in the mail. So, and then what if the person doesn't even actually get it or they're on vacation? So while I want to crack down on some of these repeat people that are sort of doing things they shouldn't be doing or abandoned properties in Willoughby, which are a problem, 
um, is there some way to maybe spend some more time with this bylaw, either by deferring it a little bit longer and I can put together some of these points in an email or referring it to CPC and we can go through some of the issues sort of line by a little bit more detailed like we are the council procedure bylaw currently. Um, like for example, nauseous weeds or noxious weeds. Um, I've actually got a Japanese cot cottonwood on one of my properties at the moment and this bylaw doesn't allow me to have that on the property. But actually, I need to allow it to grow to a certain size before they cut it off and inject the poison into it. This bylaw requires me to remove it, which I can't actually do in order to kill it. So that's just one example of probably many where this bylaw, to me, seemed a little need a little bit more work. And, and, and I'm open to have the best way to do that and maybe spend a little bit more time with it. It's just one of many examples. I had a few others. So, for example, you don't if you chop down a tree and you stack firewood on your property, you, that has to be gone that day or you're subject to potential fines. So I, I think that, that was some of the issues I wanted to review in more detail, potentially in CPC or some other format subject to the rest of the council weighing in. Thanks. Thank you. Your Worship, perhaps I can just quickly respond sure. to some of, the, some of the concerns that were raised. Uh, I don't know if I can respond to them, but just provide some, some, uh, some commentary from staff's perspective. And that is, uh, regardless of, of the matter, regardless of the bylaw, regardless of the issue, there's always a certain degree of, of judgment uh, or reasonableness that staff have to exercise. And I would suggest that the bylaw provides the hammer, but actually to use the hammer is, is when staff believe that it's necessary to use it. And we need to provide that, that you know, certain level of, uh, of discretion to staff to be able to exercise. So in the case of the, the noxious weeds, I am sure if somebody was to provide evidence that, they are, that their uh, expert advice has told them that you know, a certain amount of time has to lapse before the injection can be, can be administered, that that would be su sufficient and satisfactory. Having said that, staff is also here tonight, this evening. I asked staff in anticipation of, of more detailed questions to be able to, to respond to council if council wishes to get more, more detailed questions answered. Thank you. Councillor Arneson? Uh, yes, thank you, Your Worship. Well, I have quite a list of questions myself, but I, I'm really persuaded by Councillor Woodward's comments that perhaps it would be better to have this discussion at a CPC meeting or sometime when we have an opportunity to go through first with a presentation. And I find it challenging to look at all these different areas in a piecemeal kind of way because uh, there are a few of them that I don't support and yet I don't want to vote against all of them. And it would be too onerous to take them out and deal with them one by one. So um, my range of concerns are similar to Councillor Richter pointing out the radius uh, for unsightly property complaints. I also have an issue with our dealing with noise in the township of Langley. I think that we need to um, review and expand the kind of noise mitigation that we are requiring. And I also think that, um, generally speaking, we need to specifically look at some grandfathered uses which don't create a good interface between currently residential neighborhoods and what was pre-existing as perhaps an industrial or business use. So those would be my concerns, and I'd really appreciate an opportunity to have a staff report and to be able to discuss those things and see how we could do better. Okay, thank you. So you know for the discussion, so um, I know Councillor Richter had a motion, but it sounds like there might be one that captures all of it, just to refer, refer um, this for further discussion. So Councillor Richter, I'll put you on. Referral motion to CPC then. Okay, is there a seconder? Councillor Woodward seconds. Could you just repeat? So we're just going to, I know um, we're going to refer it to CPC to have further discussion to detail some of the concerns that were raised. Okay. Thank okay? You. Your Worship, okay. perhaps we could simply refer it to staff. That way we can bring yeah. it to CPC or to an afternoon meeting at council, depending on what the availability is. It's sure, let's do that. And then, and that way, um, maybe they can incorporate some of the comments. And if, and if members of council have, you know, I don't know some good comments on just some, some uh, further housekeeping, send that to staff in an email, and then they can certainly review that and bring it back to us. That would help expedite it. Councillor Long? I was quite impressed with the report, and I would just warn Council that it's all very well to, uh, to get involved, uh, perhaps at a certain level of detail, but um, our staff deal very well, I think, with, uh, with the things that occur out in the township, and uh, there's been a lot of thought put into this, so I don't think we should be deferring it or, or really, in my opinion, muddling around with it. And uh, staff have given good rationale for what they've been uh, including in the report, and I'm happy to support it the way it is, Your Worship. 
Okay, thank you. Council Woodward? It is still on the referral. Just one question, Mr. Backman, uh, CPC versus an afternoon meeting. The only reason to, to choose CPC over the afternoon meeting, of course, is the number of times to speak on an issue. So is there some way that we can, we can address that in an afternoon meeting separate from CPC? That's correct. I was thinking a, an option might be a special meeting uh, in the afternoon where we have some topics just because we have a fairly long agenda for the uh, CPC. So we're trying to split the load a little bit. So one would be back to CPC, then back to council. A special meeting would just allow us to deal with it. And if it had to be deferred again, that would be fine as well. Yeah, I think that, that, could, that could work. Okay. So I had, I mean, I, I, I get that this idea that just because we want to read the bylaw more thoroughly and, and deal with some of the issues in the bylaw that somehow we're being critical of the staff. I, I, I don't know why we hear this every single time that some of us maybe take the job seriously, read the bylaws, and suggest that there's some issues in the way we can improve these and some of the issues in the community. One of them being debating the radius requirement that if you don't live within 250 meters of a bylaw infraction, you're allowed to report it. That's something that, that's in this bylaw that needs to be debated. Some of the issues around notification and timelines and some of the fees that members of the public will be concurring around some real flexibility to run up a pretty good bill on somebody. There's nothing wrong with us understanding that a little bit better and reviewing it. That's, to me, being called a counselor. It's not, you know, review, reading the bylaw is somehow some kind of critical of staff. Councillor Long, thank you very much. So, so I take it you support the referral? I do support okay, the referral. Okay, that, that, right. that would have been actually quicker. Council Long, now... I, I just, spent this, lots of time reading this, although I was distracted by some other things okay. on my agenda. Thanks, your No problem. Sure. All right, we've got to move this along. So I'm going to call the question on G1 on the referral. Okay. Yeah. That carries with Council Long opposed. Let's move on. And bylaws for consideration, third reading, H1 is rezoning application number 100530, development permit application number 101083. This is Castle Hill Homes on 204th Street, bylaw number 5450. Could I have a motion, please? Yeah. Councillor Ferguson, seconder. Councillor Kuntz, discussion on H1. Seeing none, I'm calling the question on H1. Carries, Councillor Arneson opposed. H2, Official Community Plan Amendment and Rezoning Application Number 100179 and Development Permit Application Number 100903, Development Variance Permit Application Number 100103. This is Qualico Developments on uh, 78 Avenue, Bylaw 5426 and 5461. Could we have a motion, please? We need a motion. Councilor Davis, seconder. Councilor Kunst. And discussion, Councilor Richter. Yeah, I'm. Uh I've said it before and I'll say it again, 223 significant trees on this property, only one will be retained. I think we can do better. Thank you. Councillor Davis. <coughs> um, due to the, the public information meeting, there was quite a bit of concern on the, uh, pub, on the uh, pocket parks, uh, the placement of it. So could, I, could I make a move and put an amendment on? Um, or what's your amendment? Yeah. That... Uh, a development prerequisites be added to bylaw 5420 and 5461 that consistent with the provisions of the Yorkson neighborhood plan a pocket park be secured to the acceptance of the township it moved and seconded the amendment open up an amendment for discussion um, mr. Sefi could you comment on the parks that are there and if they're complying with the um neighborhood plan and OCP? Uh, yes, Your Worship. The, uh, the Yorkson Committee plan does call for a pocket park for the general area. Typically, the neighborhood plans do not show the specific property that might be the most suitable because of the fact that when the neighborhood plan is being prepared, the township does not have uh, ownership and as such it is not possible to identify a specific property for specific public purposes we do show roads because that's typically required to demonstrate connectivity etc but in terms of nodal uh, amenities such as parks or or ponds or or uh, schools we don't typically show that and as you can see on this map your worship which is the yorkshire neighbor plan there is a notation that is intentionally shown on the road there for a pocket park. And as I understand it, the, uh, uh, the motion put forward by Councillor Davis is to make sure that that is uh, secured prior to this application proceeding, which is uh, quite uh, 
uh, I guess, appropriate and has been done in the past. Okay, we just so, don't want to lose that opportunity. No, so I just want to be clear here because there's other properties there that need to be developed. Do they not contribute towards the pocket park? I'm just wondering, is this normal that we would hold up one development when really the pocket park is being um, funded by all of the developments in the area? So we hold one up for the pocket park, which might not be developed for well, some time. Uh, I'm just curious. I'm just Your Worship, curious. it has been done before. I wouldn't say it's the norm because there's nothing normal about development. Uh, but it has been it has been done in the past in terms of uh, making some of these requirements a condition of developments proceeding. Good. Thank you for that clarification. Any other discussion? Sort of clarification. Councilor Woodward. Sort of clarification. And so we're amending this to make this a condition of the development, which would effectively refer it at the same time. Because if we're if we're requiring a pocket park and there's no pocket park secured, then we're effectively referring it. Is that, I just want to understand what the motion actually says. They would have until final reading to actually yeah. secure the pocket until park. Until final readings. Okay. We're referring it. not referring just, it back to determine where it goes or anything like that. Right. It's it's a subject to, okay, I think I understand that. No, thank, you. thank you. Okay, I'm going to call the question on the amendment on H2. And the amendment uh, carries. Councillor Kuntz, Mayor Froze, Councillor Woodward opposed. So back to the main motion as amended. Councilor Woodward, uh, you had you next on the list. Yeah, I had a couple. Of, this one here, uh, maybe get some assistance from staff. There was multiple references to 205B Street, and I couldn't find anything 205B labeled on some of the site plans and drawings. And some of them are quite small and hard to read in the package that we get. I could not find 205B. Well, Your Worship, uh, I'm not sure specifically which correspondence Councillor Woodward is referring to, but this is 26th Street here where the cursor is, and one would presume that the submissions may have related to to this road here as 205B. And there were some complaints about it necessarily being transferred onto other properties, and I couldn't find one that was that was specific to a 205B. It doesn't look like that's carried on onto other people's property. So again, I... This is some of the problem that we have when we get a package again on Thursday and we have, you know, a bunch of these to read and we only have essentially one business day um, to get back. So I, I don't feel comfortable. I'd like to either get one more meeting to clarify some of that uh, before approving this um, or I just take the chance that the, that the correspondence is incorrect. Yeah, I just, it's fine. Okay. But this is the third time we've seen this. Yeah. We've seen the first reading, public hearing, third reading. So. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to call the question on uh, H2 as amended. Why? I had a question. Oh, I didn't push a button. Or I didn't. I didn't. Oh, it did. It's not coming up on my... Sorry, it's not coming up on my screen here. Councillor Long. There you go. Well, it's interesting that the slide came up that showed the pocket park. So, I mean, I, I wasn't at the public hearing. I did listen to the tape. Yeah. And I didn't hear any reference to pocket park, but why is there a pocket park? That's a desig desig is this a designation for a pocket park in that area? So it's not the specific location that has to be secured. But then the motion that we passed, which I may like to change my vote on, said it had to be on this property. No, Am I just, correct? no, it doesn't refer to being oh, on the property. I'm just going to figure out where it goes. That's right. All right. It just needs I'm to be secured. To All right. Thank you so much. Okay. Okay. I'll call a question on H2 as amended. And it carries, Councillor Richter, Councillor Woodward, Councillor Arneson opposed. And we move on to H3 has been withdrawn, so H4. Uh, rezoning application number 100529 and development permit application number 101008. Uh, this is Crew H uh, Homes Limited on 96th Avenue, bylaw 5454. Can I have a motion, please? Councillor Long, seconder. Need a second, Councillor Kunst. Discussion on H4. Councillor Richter. Yeah, the uh, parking issues that came up uh, at the public hearing with regards to parking out on, I guess it's 96th Avenue. I'm wondering if we could uh, refer this back to staff to deal with those parking issues. Uh, Mr. Seffi, did the, uh, um, has there been any uh, work with the uh, proponent regarding uh, uh, adding additional parking since the public hearing? Yes, Your Worship, uh, Council may recall that this application after public hearing was considered by Council at the last meeting, which was 
about a month ago, April 15th, as I recall. At that time, council did refer the application back to staff to address the, uh, the concerns raised at the public hearing, and staff had uh, a number of discussions with the applicant and their consultant team, and they came back with a proposal that, unfortunately, I don't have a slide for, but it's on council's agenda. It's in the package. It provides for two additional parking stalls within the development. Thank you. Councillor Long? Yeah, I, I was on council when the first part of this development went, and there were some concerns by people moving in on parking. Now the people that are living there are concerned about the next one, so it's kind of cute in a way. But uh, no, I was just going to say that I recall uh, reading in the report that the, the parking situation had been, had been addressed. The other thing is I think that the common entrance that is only a half a road right now is going to be put to completion. That will help with uh, alleviating a lot of congestion there. But anyway, I'm happy to support it. Thank, thank you. you. Councillor Arneson. Well, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, maybe the case that there was uh, some tweaking of the parking in another couple of spots. But I recall quite some time ago studying 96th Avenue, and it is an arterial road and will eventually be four lanes. Therefore, I really, I think in addition to thinking about how many driveways should be on and off in order, you know, that we don't impede traffic too much, we should look at the volume of traffic that's trying to get on and off. I really think that we need to pay more attention to the fact that this type of infill, no matter what, is definitely bringing a kind of density. And I do wonder what that's going to look like when 96th Avenue is already very congested and it's only going to get worse. Thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing none, I'll call the question on H4. Isn't the referral? Is it? No. It's not been referred. I don't think it's been referred. It's, um, it's on, on the docket. And the carries, Councillor Arneson opposed. And we move on to bylaws for final adoption. And I-1 is inclusion of a representative from the Fraser Health Authority on the Seniors Advisory Committee, bylaw 5473. Could I have a motion, please? Councillor Arneson, second. Councillor Richter, discussion. Seeing none, call the question on I-1. Carries unanimously. I-2 is a 2019 Langley Annual Rates and tax collection bylaw for universal services bylaw number 5474. Could I have a motion, please? Okay. Councillor Davis, second by Councillor Ferguson. Call the question. Oh. Carries unanimously. Uh, I-3 is Sanitary Development Works Agreement bylaw, South Brookswood Infrastructure Incorporated bylaw 5472. Could I have a motion, please? Okay. Councillor Long, second by Councillor Davis. Discussion on I-3, seeing none. Oh, sorry, there is one. Councilor Richter. Now, I still think we should be waiting for the neighborhood plans before we move forward with this. Okay, thank you. And I'll call the question on I-3. Carries with Councilor Richter, Councilor Woodward, Councilor Arneson opposed. I-4 is Drainage Development Works Agreement Bylaw, South Brookswood Infrastructure Limited Bylaw 5471. Have a motion, please. Councilor Long, seconder. Any second? Councilor Kuntz, discussion. Councilor Richter. Same point as before, we should be waiting for those neighborhood plans. Thank you. Uh, call the question. I-4. And it carries. Councilor Richter, Councilor Woodward, Councilor Arneson opposed. And we move on to the Mayor and Council report. And it's time to check the score again. Let's see. <laughs> uh, still 1-1. One, one. There you go. It's not off. Sorry? What period? It's in, they're in the... Uh, Oh, they're in the third period. Just, just started the third period. So there you go. So the mayor and council report. Uh, good evening, everyone. It's uh, been a busy few weeks. It's been about a been about a month since we've last met. Uh, Tuesday, the April sixteenth, was the annual Greater Langley Chamber of Commerce Langley Leadership Panel, where myself, MLA Rich Coleman, MLA Mary Pollock, and MP John Aldag uh, were in attendance, and we fielded questions from chamber uh, members. On Wednesday, April 24th, the Township of hosted a joint town hall meeting here at the Civic Facility. The panel consisted of myself, MLA Rich Coleman, MLA Mary Pollock, MP John Aldag, RCMP Superintendent Murray Power, Fire Chief Stephen Gamble, and Langley School Board Chair Megan Dykeman. About 50 residents attended and asked an array of questions. I'd like to thank our moderator, Frank Buckholz, for keeping us all on track and, did, again, did an excellent job. On Thursday, April 25th, we hosted a joint funding announcement with the province of British Columbia and the Government of Canada 
regarding Highway 1 improvements and the much needed widening between 216 and 264 streets. On Sunday, April 28th, and just a little side note on the widening is that uh, it's just the beginning. We've got to keep this thing going and keep lobbying our other levels of government for funding so we can get it uh, widened all the way through Abbotsford. On uh, Sunday, April 28th, uh, started out with the annual uh, lapsed furry tail foot race at the Derby Reach Park. And then it was off to St. George's British Motoring Show where the mayor's choice this year was a 1964 Mini. And apparently it's the 70th anniversary of the Mini. And so I chose a, a 64 Mini. It was in pretty mint condition. That afternoon is our annual Community Arbor Day celebration at uh, Dale Ball Passive Park. On Wednesday, May 1st was a Global News Mayor's Roundtable where several mayors met and discussed matters facing our communities uh, with the Global News uh, Group, Court, I guess that's Chorus Entertainment owns that, and they have several news and media outlets. And so we had a really great discussion on, uh, on where we saw working with the media and how they could work with us. On Friday, May 3rd, I dropped uh, by the Youth versus Langley, RCMP All-Star Basketball Championship in Willoughby, one of the many events held as part of Youth Week. And uh, this was our recreation um, uh, attendance and staff at the Willoughby Community Centre who put this on. RCMP were there in... in uh, in, in full force to uh, to play basketball with the youth, and they, I know they had two courts going, and there were some good games. So uh, kudos to our staff and to the RCP for supporting this. Uh, lots of young people there help, are playing basketball. On Saturday, May 4th, I attended the Lee uh, Mulhan Kilpin New ex Exhibition Reception at the Langley Centennial Museum. And this is a, a collection of art by a famous Canadian artist that uh, is now owned by our... Um, our uh, museum, it was donated to the museum some time ago. Really interesting exhibition. I recommend everyone to, to get down to the museum and, and take a look at it. Uh, and uh, amazed at the different uh, styles he had over his career and, uh, and uh, just the, the beautiful artwork. On Sunday, May 5th, was the 57th annual Langley Walk held by the township and the city of Langley at Aldergrove Athletic Park. The sun shone, hundreds of people came out, and it was another successful year the uh, event this year so uh, lots of members of council were there and uh, took part in the walk on monday uh, may 7th a transit coalition made up of uh, mayor's cote mayor little mayor stewart mayor vandenbrock and mayor buchanan and myself went to ottawa where we met with over 26 uh, federal members of parliament within a 12-hour day our mission was to firm up support for our long-term transportation infrastructure needs and the call to cure congestion uh, with the upcoming federal election, we felt it was important, and the mayor's uh, support of this, that, uh, w that the mayor's council have a, uh, uh, a program to lobby all parties to ensure that transportation is on their platform so that uh, when you go to the, to the polls or when you're choosing your candidate, make sure that they are supporting transportation in our region. It's very important that we have the funding that's uh, sustainable. On Wednesday, May 8th uh, to 10th, I attended the BioCycle Conference in uh, Whistler, it's, it's, a bio, it's a, the Biocycle Council of British Columbia, uh, where Metro Vancouver received the, the, um, Recyc sorry, it's the Recycle Council of British Columbia 2019 Environmental Awards for our campaign, Think Thrice About Your Clothes, which I accepted as, on behalf of Metro as chair of uh, Metro's Zero Waste Committee. So uh, I'm there with uh, members of staff from the, from the uh, Solid Waste, and uh, it's good to see the work that we do. Um, on or the Metro does. On Friday, May 10th, I had the pleasure of personally uh, wishing local resident Ella Elliott a very happy 100th birthday. And uh, she was radiant and uh, really enjoying her party, and she filled that room. All her friends were there and family. So it was nice to be there and, and uh, present her with her certificate from the township. Also on Friday, our Vancouver Giants fought off being eliminated from the Rod uh, Rogers WHL Championship Series with a win against Prince Albert Raiders at the Langley Event Center. Our local team went on to win again last night at Prince Albert, so we're all waiting for the outcome of Game 7 tonight. And uh, pretty excited to have a team in Langley at that high level uh, of uh, competition and um, certainly hoping that they'll be uh, moving on to the Memorial Cup in Halifax. This morning on May 13th, I attended the, Langley, the annual Langley Centennial Museum Volunteer Luncheon. And sorry, I don't have a slide for that. But uh, for the docents, who provide all the programs to the school children that come through there and have their annual lunch, and it was a pleasure to be there with them. Uh, the Mayor's Standing Committee on Development uh, Management Process Review has been confirmed with the following members, uh, Councillor Blair Whitmarsh, Councillor Margaret Kuntz, Councillor Steve Ferguson, and myself, and from the community, uh, Sean Bouchard, and uh, Murray Dinwoody, and Kevin Nielsen. I'm still waiting on confirmation for uh, the uh, one more appointee. 
Um, now, Acting Mayor, Acting Mayor Whitmarsh attended the following events. Uh, April 17th, the Langley RCP Volunteer Appreciation Dinner. On April 25th, Prospera Valley Grand Fondo Meet and Greet. And, and Friday, April 26th, Inclusion Langley Child Development Services Cheers for Charity Wine Tasting Fundraiser. Acting Mayor Long and attended the following events. On Saturday, April 27th, Langley Lawn, Lawn Bowling Club official opening. Friday, May 3rd, uh, housing uh, funding announcement, White Rock. And Monday, May 6th, in Argyle, the uh, neighborhood planning team, neighborhood planning uh, sub teams meeting it in uh, Brookswood. Um, I must confess I didn't make the lawn bowling. Oh, we did make the lawn bowling? Okay. Uh, My yeah. name is Mud. Uh, yeah, well, I'll get you next year. Uh, Council has been busy. Councilor Whitmarsh, uh, Councilor Ferguson, Councilor Arneson attended the April 16th Greater Landing Chamber of Commerce dinner meeting. Council Arneson and Ferguson attended the VIP announcement event for 2019 Fort Langley Jazz and Arts Festival on, on Friday, April 19th. Council Richter and Council Woodward attended the Critter Care Banquet on Saturday, April 27th. Council Ferguson attended the Variety Children's Charity Event one night in the Valley on Saturday, April 27th. The Top 20 Under 25, the State of the Address by Mayor Doug McCollum and the Langley Flip City Nationals. Council Richter attended the Langley Meadows Outdoor Classroom Celebration May 1. Councilor Kunst attended the Sassy Awards on May 2 and McHappy Days on May 8th. Council Arneson attended the Naosh Barbecue on May 7th and attending the LMLGA uh, Conference, the Lower Mainland Local Government Association Conference up at Harrison where Councillors Arneson, Long, Kunst, Ferguson and Council Richter. Very busy month and uh, thank all of Council for uh, all the, the service that they have done. Upcoming events, the 97th Annual May Day Parade will be held in Fort Langley on Monday, May 20th at uh, 11 a.m. So with that, I'll just turn it over to Council if they have anything to add. Councillor Richter? Uh, yes. I'm, I, from the uh, Lower Mainland Local Government Association uh, meeting, a couple of things. Um, one of the uh, sponsors there was TELUS. And TELUS has launched a new healthcare product, which I'm really excited about. It's called, I think they call it Babylon, or it could be Babylon, I'm not sure, uh, by TELUS Health. And essentially, if you download the uh, B-A-B-Y-L-O-N app from TELUS.com, you can put healthcare in your hands at any time on evenings and weekends through your phone. So you can actually contact a doctor and speak to a doctor about the symptoms that you or a member of your family is experiencing. That doctor will send a prescription for you to your local uh, uh, pharmacy. Uh, they'll manage, uh, they'll create a medical record for you. Uh, doctors are available seven days a week, evenings and weekends, and you can get playback of their notes from this app. So anybody in this community that has trouble accessing health care on evenings and weekends, this is the way to go, and I'm pretty sure this is the way the future is going to go too. So very impressive prop, uh, product. Again, telus.com slash B-A-B-Y-L-O-N. Second thing I just wanted to bring up for the rest of uh, council, uh, Langley City had put on a couple of um, uh, resolutions with regards to election financing for the next municipal campaign. And uh, one of the things that uh, was passed was that the cap on donations that individuals can make on their own or to their own campaign be raised from $1,200 a year to $5,000 a year. The other one that passed was that uh, we lobby to get a tax deduction for uh, individual donations to municipal campaigns. Now these resolutions passed, they are now going from LMLGA uh, to UBCM. So I'm asking uh, any members of our council who are going to be at UBCM this year, I unfortunately won't be, if you could please support these resolutions. I think they're important to municipal elections and getting more people involved in municipal elections going forward. I appreciate that. And on the, um, the tax receipt, that's important because the federal government and the provincial government passed legislation that they can only receive donations from individuals, but they give a tax receipt. Then the provincial government said, we want to have it the same for local government. So they passed the legislation that we can only receive donations or people are running for office from individuals, but we can't give a tax receipt. So it's very unfair, and uh, hopefully that that will pass. Certainly be supporting that. 
Thank you for that report. Uh, Councillor Ferguson. Oh, yeah. I, I know that you did mention in the mayor's, mayor's report three really quick things. The first thing is that Flip City Invitational, where one of the athletes was born in Langley, uh, Zachary Clay, uh, basically he is off to the world champions the second time around and, and on the certainly national team, and they're hoping to make the Olympics. That's the first one in Langley student. And next, next one is a, a member of um, our community is winning a Surrey Award for uh, one of the top people under 25, 25 people under 25 for work at uh, as Peyton Winslade, her work at SFU and also donations throughout the community. And a, the third thing, which I think is still important, it's important to everybody in this room, everybody in your community, it's our relationship with the city of Surrey. And I attended the mayor's presentation. He showed off the new police car, which I may or may not support. It's up to him, it's up to the city of Surrey. But if they have a strong, growing community and a dedicated economic force, we need to work hand in hand with them because we can become an economic force south of the Fraser in which many people can live, work, and earn in the area, and I think that's so important. Also, I wasn't on your mayor's report, I was able to um, attend the opening of the SFU Surrey New Engineering Campus, and that's state of the art, and many Langley students are going there as well, so certainly another way that we can build partnerships between SFU, Langley, and also the city of Surrey. So I think that's so important. I was a little bit disappointed appointed that we did have a meeting scheduled with the city of Surrey and Langley to go over mutual things. And I hope I know it was counseled. I hope we can reschedule as soon as possible because I think our relationship with Surrey is so important. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so now we'll move on to... Um other business, the score is two to one Raiders. Not good. Um, third period, time's 11.30 in the third period. All right, um, so I'm gonna put on, um, Councillor Richter has a, what was the motion? Let me just clear this queue and start all over again. Councillor Richter. Yes, and I've said it before and I'll say it again. I'm putting this forward uh, on behalf of the residents of 216th Street North. Whereas the funding, uh, $100,000 for a corridor study on 216th Street North has been approved in the 2019 budget by Council, therefore be it resolved that the 216th Street North corridor study begin immediately. I so move. A seconder, Councillor Davis seconds. Thank you. I have a question for staff. Um, if we were to proceed immediately on this, and, uh, and I know it was discussed in ensuring that we have um, monies available and it's so important to do the study after it, it opens too, is it possible to start this uh, study? I know we have a lot of information already that can be brought forward and then have an interim report prior to it opening and then a final report after its opening. Is that something that's doable and then we could get this moving? So basically bringing together some of the information that's there, uh, starting the framework for the study so we're not too late or not waiting too long, but ensuring that there's still some time to see the impacts after it opens. And I'm not sure when it's gonna open. It might even be spring before it opens. Um, from what I've, I've heard. Your Worship, the uh, current schedule that the province staff have given us is for the opening to be end of this year. Okay. Uh, we have not been advised that that's changed. With that in mind, I believe in, in theory at least what you're suggesting, Your Worship, is actually quite possible to start the, the process, start the ball rolling, uh, and perhaps have a, an interim report with the final report pending the outcome of, of further... Uh, review of the actual numbers and uh, confirmation of the projections after the uh, interchange has opened. I think it's possible. Okay, so that would kind of balance what, what we heard tonight. We want to have something now, but we also want to make sure that we have one after too. Okay, thank you. Councillor Richter. Yes, and uh, I think uh, the residents have been very clear that uh, they want some more baseline data. Um, and that the parties that are going to be able to affect positive change on their neighborhood start coming to the table now so that those discussions can take place uh, with a multidisciplinary approach. So um, I'm hopeful that we will pass this resolution for them and if we can start collecting data now and finish it off after it opens, that works for me. Thank you. Councillor Ferguson? 
Yeah, and just a quick question, staff, if my through the chair. Is there any data available yet as to uh, the impact that this particular in interchange is going to have? I mean, many of us are coming on council, and uh, the interchange was was presented last uh, council term. If I may, through the chair. Mr. Zaffi? Uh, certainly, Your Worship, but I don't know if, if you can call it data. It is actually projections, because until the interchange opens, you don't exactly know how people's behaviors and travel patterns might change. I mean, certainly, I guess the, the question is, is the impact on the neighborhood. And, you know, I imagine right now, the, over the last couple of years, there's been construction all around and, and dust. And I've been driving up that area several times. and. You know, I, I guess uh, on a Sunday, I guess nobody was there, so I was able to drive a little bit closer on site. It's a heck of an impact, and I think that they would like to see when it does uh, finalize um, that uh, say all measures are taken into consideration, as Councillor Richter and others have said, that safety measures, uh, sidewalks, and you know, cycling and other trails, and, and uh, some sort of calming so that it doesn't become a, a, a safety issue. But those are... Certainly the residents um, have, have been patient for this long, so it, it should be a benefit to everybody all the way around. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Woodward. Councillor Arneson go first. Oh, Councillor Arneson. Oh, thank you, Your Worship. Um, I, I just wanted to add my voice to those who are supporting to do this corridor study now. I think uh, the residents have been very clear, and I really want to congratulate them for all their advocacy. I know it's been challenging. Um, you have new infrastructure in the community, and you're just wanting to do your best in order to protect um, the community, as uh, most particularly your health as well as children. So that, to me, the whole purpose of doing this in advance is there's already projections of numbers that is an identifiable base of what you need to look at in order to understand what it is that you should be considering putting in. So I think signals, traffic calming, and other traffic-related installations are really important to study prior to the completion of the interchange. So I think really now is the time. Um, I also believe that um, there is a really good stakeholder policy in place in which those other levels of government, ICBC, individuals who are tasked and knowledgeable about doing that are ready and willing to work with the community in order to have that happen because my primary concern as a counselor is when we start having budget discussions again that this not get somehow lost in the infrastructure choices we're going to be making and continue to make for a variety of really valid reasons I just want to make sure that the community is well served by us and so I think we should move forward as soon as possible that's ordered <clears throat> so one of my reasonings for for putting the we're proposing that we add the 216th quarter study to the budget, which was part of the amendment that I put together in February, was that I thought it would be important to do a, do a comprehensive review of the corridor from the interchange to 96 to, to better understand the improvements that would be required or needed on the corridor before funding them and, and, in, and then understanding the full scope of what would be needed and potentially look at how we would fund that over maybe a couple of years starting with the most important. And then this memo um, from April 3rd, which I really appreciated, and, and, I, and I think it explained a lot of the history, which Councillor Ferguson was alluding to, um, in terms of why it's being recommended to complete the study after the interchange opens. And I may have incorrectly concluded, but I've concluded that you've got the traffic engineering, which, which is relying on traffic counts and justifications for infrastructure improvements and not wanting to slow traffic down uh, with some of those improvements versus what I think the community is perceiving as a planning document in terms of how the corridor can be improved for safety people and people on bikes. And so, for example, in regards to some of the studies that have occurred prior to the, in around October last year, it says here, based on that approval, staff included funding to undertake a detailed assessment of the proposed additions to determine what improvements may be required to make the new routes suitable for truck traffic. <laughs> So I think that's the goal. It's re regarding truck traffic, which is, which, is, which is something that's necessary for a truck route. Then on here, the township would undertake a study of the 216th Street corridor prior to the opening of the interchange. It would utilize the same traffic volume projections provided by Parsons for the opening day of the interchange. So we would be repeating some of the study or using current traffic counts, and it makes more sense to potentially wait for the interchange to open. 
And, and that's kind of where I concluded that we have traffic engineering versus a planning document for people, pedestrians, and some of the schools. So for me, I'm, I'm kind of wondering to get some more details on what this might look like to begin the study now and then finish it up when the interchange is open, potentially still informing the budget process for 2020, which was the original intent. Can we get some ideas around a sort of a planning idea of the corridor versus just strictly counting cars and making recommendations based on that? Can we get something more nuanced that can inform the budget? And then we could add the traffic counts next year and wrap it up then and do some sort of interim, but have it be worthwhile and valuable for this year's budget process. Can I get some more detail on what that compromise looks like? Mr. Seffi. So I, I think maybe just to add to it, I know um, I, I, I had uh, mentioned having get starting it now and, and, and bringing forward some of the some of the um, studies that are already there, and also maybe doing some some more if it's necessary, and then having an interim report, and then final report at the end. So just before you, do we need a motion for that, or is that direction? And then maybe you can answer Councillor Woodward's question. I uh, just want to get the process straight. Yeah, but a motion for the interim report. Do we need that, or is that just direction, Mr. Steffi? I think it would be good to have it as part of the motion, okay. Your Worship, to, to provide clarity to staff so so we have uh, a clear direction from Council yeah, and it's and it's public such that there's no question about what it can actually Council mean uh, in terms of the interpretation that staff might have as part of, uh, I guess, in response to your to Councillor Woodward's question as to what would that look like uh, as you were, I guess, framing the question, Your Worship, I was trying to imagine what it might actually look like as well, because it's not something that, that staff had thought about before. And what I can foresee is, is some investigation, some research, some review of existing studies that have been done already that have been referenced by various members of council and the public. Uh, so uh, basically a research of existing documentation and existing conditions is what could begin. And in theory, that could take, I guess, a couple of months by the time we actually uh, prepare the terms of reference, go out to tender, seek out a consultant, and, and get the preliminary work done. It could take three to four months. Uh, so we're looking at, at post summer before we can actually have a bit of a draft report that we could present to council in terms of what might improvements look like, and then pending the outcome of an of a analysis or a, a recording of the traffic numbers, the final report could be, could be then presented to council. Thank you. Yeah, so because I think yeah, I think this definitely has to go in the motion because I think it's conflicting direction that, that sort of created this in the in the in the first place. Um, I'm just trying to get to the original idea that we we wanted to rather than just run ahead and do improvements to the corridor that that we have a view of what the corridor might look like uh, at the end, even if it's funded over more than one budget. So the two the the 16th Avenue corridor study with an external consultant. And the, even the summary version of that was quite helpful to see what the corridor was going to look like, some of the issues, some of the projections for you know five years and 10 years and 20 years, um, whether or not it's, it's something that that can be done now with the existing traffic counts and then informed later, or we can get to a, a little, something a little bit more that would allow us to have confidence that we're funding the right improvements. I don't know. I'm not. I mean, I'm not being specific enough. But I'm trying to get to a point where we don't. We don't have something that really doesn't inform the decision making process, um, to help us improve the corridor to the direction that we should be, not just for yeah. truck traffic. Yeah, I, I think that would be the intent of of this. Is certainly that if we can kind of balance all the wants and needs of the communities, have the an interim report now, but we really can't. We need to have the final report before we can we can start. Uh, uh, looking at major improvements, there may be something in the interim report that that staff can um, can advise that uh, over the next budget process we can get put put in. But I think without that consolidation of the information and staff reporting back to us, it'd be difficult. But I, I th hopefully, that addresses what you're asking because I know what you're saying is that we need all the information before we can make the decisions on what we're going to do. And so, it'll help be helpful to have the interim report to see where we're at, and then also it's not going to be that much longer. Um, traffic will be flowing and we can get the full report and make some of those decisions. Is that? Yeah, I think it's, it's helpful. I think it's also want to confirm that the intent is to use an outside consultant similar to the 16th Avenue corridor study on getting a nod. So I think that that's also important and that it's not just simply about traffic counts, which I've said a couple of times already, um, and that we are looking at, at some sort of review that goes beyond the truck traffic 
and if that's clear, then uh, then maybe there is some way to get going on it now with an interim report. Just don't want to have staff do that work and then not come back and, and be what we expect, and then we're back here again discussing yep. it again after we've spent the money. That's my only concern oh. about that. Fair enough. Thank you. Councilor Long. Yeah, it's getting a little complicated, but I think the motion is simply asking staff to get underway right away, right, get started. And, in fact, it was really good that we heard from uh, Mr. Safey that it's going to take some time to put all the consultants in place and everything else. So I think we're all on the, on the same page, or is there, um, is there going to be some kind of an amendment made I'll, I'm going to do, um, I'm gonna do a amendment since I've heard from everybody. I'll just do it. Yeah, yeah, I'll have. I'll well, have just before on. I yeah. lose the mic, I, I'm supportive of getting going, and I thought I heard staff say that. Yeah. So rather than than council trying to actually word what staff are going to do, maybe staff could come back. Well, well we can no, we can we can I'll massage work. something now, but it sounds like staff have heard us quite clearly. Yeah. So let's just get going with it. So I'll, I'll put council rector on. Just my intention is, unless council rector has something else to add, is I'll just if there's unanimous consent that we would add that there would be an interim report um, to council. And uh, with the final report completed after the uh, interchange opens, but Councillor Richter, I would. Yes, my my request is that uh, we deal with your suggestion as a separate motion, yep. out of respect to the people on 216th Street North that crafted this motion themselves. Um, and I think if we muddy up their motion, uh, we're not going to give them the level of comfort that they want to have. So let's deal with this motion first and then follow it right up immediately with what you're suggesting, Mr. Mayor. Sure, it's e either way, it's, it, it works either way because the motion, this, there'll be a secondary motion that would impact this one, so it's like an amendment, is that correct, Ms. Bauer? So, okay, I'm gonna call the question then on M1 and then I'll have that secondary motion. It carries unanimously. And so the secondary motion that um, I would move is that, uh, that staff um, provide an interim report uh, prior to year end. I don't know what, Mr. Seff, you gotta help me with this because you've got, you got to, you're the one providing it. Um, and so I'm just loosely phrasing it, an interim report uh, with the final report uh, after the interchange, interchange opens. And that's fine, Your Worship. That's fine? Yeah. Okay, so I'd move that. Is there a seconder? Second by Councilor Kuntz. Discussion on that? Seeing none, I'll call the question. It carries unanimously. Is there any other business? <laughs> Were you voting against or in favor? No, I saw a 2 2 Giants here. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's 2 2. Yeah, no. 2 2 so far, yeah. And getting. Yeah, a couple of minutes left in the third period, 2 2. So, any other business? Okay, motion to terminate. Termination. Councilor Davis, second. Councilor Long, all those in favor, opposed carried. Let's take a couple of minutes before we move into the public hearing, and uh, thank you very much.